Hey, yo, foreigner, you crazy for this Okay, 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 okay. I'm jab riding when I'm left hooking fiends said they love me cause they know I keep that sack moving Sad to say but this the life that I have grown in I had to hustle skipping class man I was true in I can flip some packs and teach Yo man what's going on everybody welcome back to the Bucket Discussions podcast the channel man whatever you want to call it It is your boy Jay Coop back with another discussion video And in this video man I just want to talk about these two series uh, that are going on between the Phoenix Suns and the Dallas Mavericks and also the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers man so uh, both of these series were just tied up 2-2 yesterday, and I feel like it's a completely different ball game when you're talking about uh, these four teams. You know what I'm saying? They all have different paths to the finals, so um, I feel like it just got a lot harder for, for the uh, Phoenix Suns and Miami Heat. So uh, to start things off, man, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about the Dallas Mavericks. So without wasting any more time, man, let's get straight into it. So to start off this Dallas Mavericks versus Phoenix Suns series, man, uh, obviously it, the first two games took place in Phoenix because they had the better record. Um, but honestly, I feel like the stat line that put him over the top in game one was obviously Devin Booker leading the way uh, to that 121 and 114 victory. Uh, he had eight assists. He had nine rebounds with 23 points, which honestly, like I said, was probably the stat line that put him over the top. But I'd say the biggest X factor in that game one uh, that kind of just set the tone for the series. Well, at least we thought, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like DeAndre Ayton's 25 points and, and eight rebounds kind of set the tone just because obviously the Dallas Mavericks don't really have any big bodies like that. So it's kind of just tough to um, have anyone else, you know, smaller than DeAndre Ayton to have, you know, them guard him for a full 48 minutes is what I'm trying to say pretty much. So, uh, yeah, but in game two, man, I feel like that game was, honestly, once game two happened, I pretty much thought this the series was, was a wrap just because uh, the Phoenix Suns came out uh, with a victory, 129 to 109, which was kind of insane, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Devin Booker came out hot, dropping, he, you, know, you know what I'm saying? He had 30 points, he had four assists, four rebounds. Chris Paul with a pretty impressive stat line as well. You know what I'm saying? He had 28 points, eight uh, assists, six rebounds. Um, so I feel like that that stat line with Chris Paul kind of set the tone for game two, especially, you know what I'm saying? But then, honestly, I don't know what happened. He came out game three and Reggie Bullock uh, just decided to clamp up all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? It was very, very impressive, I can't even lie. Uh, it was Chris Paul's birthday, and I'll tell you what, Reggie Bullock was not, not trying to let Chris Paul get off at all you know what i'm saying chris paul's stat line that man finished with 12 points four assists and seven rebounds obviously it doesn't look like it's that bad but the shooting percentages the numbers bro was just terrible man um i'd say reggie bullock was probably the biggest x factor for the dallas mavericks in uh that game three just like i said man he was clamping up man um i think uh chris paul had i want to say like six or seven turnovers and um Reggie Bullock was responsible for five of those turnovers, man. So you got to give um, respect and props to Reggie Bullock, man. He's really stepped up ever since that game three. And it's kind of funny to see. I ain't even going to lie, man. And also the fact that uh, Jalen Brunson had 28 points. He had four uh, rebounds and five assists. I feel like that also, that performance right there kind of helped set the tone for game three as well because Luka came out with 26 points, 13 rebounds, and uh, nine assists. Man almost had a triple-double that night. So I feel like that... That performance as well by Luka Doncic kind of helped set the tone in Game 3, along with, like I said, Reggie Bullock's great defense all of a sudden. I didn't expect him to come out and play defense like that. So, um, yeah, man, they did they did their thing, man, got the job done on CP3's birthday. And, hey, that's really all you could ask of players like Reggie Bullock, you know what I'm saying, just to come out, hit a couple threes, uh, potentially lock down um, the opposite team's best player. I mean, that's kind of debatable between Devin Booker and Chris Paul, but obviously Chris Paul, he's known for getting the offense uh, going. You know what I'm saying? So Reggie Bullock, man, you really did your thing, my guy. But moving on to that game four between the Dallas Mavericks and the Phoenix Suns that took place yesterday, man. Um, honestly, I feel like no one really had that outstanding of a performance besides Luka Dantage. Uh He finished with 11 assists, 26 points, seven rebounds. You also had D Dorian Finney-Smith with uh, eight rebounds, 24 points, which was huge because Dorian Finney-Smith was going off in that second half. I can't even lie. He hit so many big shots down the stretch for uh, this Dallas team. I was like, damn, man. Like, I knew Dorian Finney-Smith was kind of like that, but I didn't think he had that, you know, that kind of killer instinct. Um, obviously, this was just one game, but the way he was out there, you know, shooting that thing, he was really doing his fucking thing. So we can't even hate 
Um, like I said, he had 24 points, eight rebounds. I'm pretty sure the efficiency was pretty good too because honestly, I didn't see him take um, a lot of just boneheaded shots like that. You know what I'm saying? Like obviously I have the numbers here and stuff like that, but the eye test sometimes tells different. You know what I'm saying? Um, the numbers don't tell the whole story. I feel like Dorian Finney-Smith definitely um, was probably their biggest X factor yesterday. Um, you know what I'm saying? When it just came to the offensive side of the ball, besides obviously Luka Dantage, because it doesn't matter who's on him. Obviously, man, hey, the Phoenix Suns have two of um, the best, you know, perimeter defenders in Cameron Johnson and also Mikhail Bridges. And the fact that Luka Dantage is still getting off and doing his thing, man, it's, it's very impressive. Um, but, hey, man, the series, man, is tied up 2-2. So, like I said, man, there's really no telling which way the series can go, man. Um, obviously... Uh, the series doesn't really start until a team wins an away game, so we're just going to have to see what happens. Um, game five in Phoenix, we're going to have to see if Dallas can come out, you know, throwing haymakers, or if we're going to see if um, Phoenix Suns can just, you know, withhold them and, you know, hold them off until uh, they can get back into Dallas, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully uh, the Phoenix Suns can try to get a win back there. But me personally, I'm not rooting for any team, but I'm just saying that the series is tied up 2-2, uh, and man, and I, this is a series now. So now let's go ahead and um, talk about this Philadelphia 76ers and this Miami Heat series. Um, obviously, when this series started, a lot of people had the Miami Heat pretty much just like kind of sweeping the 76ers because a lot of people didn't think Joel Embiid was coming back, um, which I was kind of one of those people. I was like, well, if there is no Joel Embiid, well, it's going to be really tough for uh, the Philadelphia 76ers to have a chance to even tie the series up or even contend in the series in general. You feel me? So um, the fact that uh, Joel Embiid came back. I feel like that's obviously the biggest X factor. Like without Joel Embiid, you guys never had a chance to begin with. So um, after the the Miami Heat went up 2-2, you know what I'm saying? Obviously the series, the first two games took place in Miami because they had the better record, and um, they got their job done in their home. Um, game one. I will say Tobias Harris, man. There was a lot of you know speculation about. Uh, what Tobias Harris could bring this postseason and stuff like that. I will say that game one, he really did um, come out and do his thing. He had 21 points, I mean 27 points, excuse me, six rebounds and also an assist on top of that. Um, Tobias Harris has never really been a playmaker like that, so I've never expected him to, ha uh, you know, go all crazy when it comes to passing the ball and stuff like that. Um, but honestly, anyone else on the 76ers in that game one really didn't do anything like that. Uh, the second highest scorer on the 76ers was Tyrese Maxey with 19 points. The third was um, James Harden with 16 points. And honestly, uh, that's one thing I want to touch on real quick is if James Harden really isn't going to give you more than 20, 25 points, you really, especially without Joel Embiid, you really don't have a chance to win uh, a playoff game, let alone a playoff series, you feel me? So uh, if the 76ers won a chance, man, I feel like uh, even with Joel back, I feel like James Harden is still going to have to, you know, step back a little bit into that Houston Rockets uh, format. I mean, I don't know if that's possible or not, but last night in the game four, we've seen that. We've seen a glimpse of that, man. We're going to get into it here in a second. But, um, yeah, man, let's move on to this game two. Now, for this game two, Miami, they still came out with a pretty dominant victory, 119-103 uh, to 103 victory right here. Uh, but I will say for the Philadelphia 76ers, the scoring numbers were a little bit more up. Uh, for their for their players and stuff like that, Tyrese Maxey came out with a 34 piece. Uh, Tobias Harris came out with four, four and 21, which was pretty decent. And I will say, James Harden, his scoring wasn't really there that night. He, he finished the game with 20 points, but I will say his game overall uh, that night was, you know, I feel like it was pretty effective. Uh, they, he had uh, obviously, like I said, 20 points. He had nine assists, four rebounds, stuff like that. Uh, I feel like no one else on the team really had an outstanding. Uh, performance like that it was only those three players that scored double digits so I feel like that pretty much uh, tells you everything you need to know about the Philadelphia 76ers side of things uh, but as for the Miami Heat man a hey, Bam Adebayo man he was really getting off in those first two games and I, I will get on to that a little bit later uh, in those last two games in game three and game four uh, what's been different but yeah man I will say in those first two games Bam Adebayo was really uh, feasting at the rim I will say that you know what I'm saying he's really doing his thing getting to the hole getting to the rack doing what he has to do Jimmy Butler man has easily been probably one of the best players in the playoffs so far I'd say um, I don't know what his exact averages are right now but just uh, when it comes to carrying your team and stuff like that I feel like Jimmy Butler has really been doing a hell of a job just you know what I'm saying carrying his team over the top uh, you know what I'm saying because like I said those first two games were pretty dominant victories for the most part um, it's not like it was like major 
30 point blowouts nothing like that but uh, right here in game two they won by 16 pretty you know comfortable lead for them and um, I will say Victor Oladipo like I said in that X Factors video uh, Victor Oladipo will definitely be one of the biggest X Factors and he kind of has been this man finished with uh, six rebounds 19 points and an assist uh, to top that off so I feel like that was a pretty decent performance by Victor Oladipo himself so yeah man let's move on to this game three real quick this game three man it was really really underwhelming by the Miami Heat man they only scored 79 points in a playoff game man 79 points as a number one seed in the playoffs just let that sink in real quick that's kind of crazy man uh, but that, honestly man right here is where um, the series kind of took like a turning point uh, when Joel Embiid came back like I said man uh, earlier about Bam Adebayo having like 20 20 something points I forgot the exact stat line but this game man he finished with nine points he finished with one assist and three rebounds that alone just lets you know you know how big of a presence Joel Embiid brings when he is on uh, the defensive side of the court uh, man yeah Joel Embiid is is a monster man that just shows you why he was in the MVP talk all season for real uh, but yeah man once once uh, Joel Embiid came back I feel like Bam Adebayo was a whole mindset when it came to attacking the rim everything just changed because this man was like scared of the rim like he did not even want to go in the paint he was he was just hiding from Joel Embiid it felt like it was kind of crazy man I ain't even gonna lie but um, as for Jimmy Butler, like I said, man, he's been getting off this whole playoffs. This man finished the game with 33 points, two assists. He also had nine rebounds to finish that off. Um, no one else had it, uh, even somewhat of an impressive performance, honestly, in this game, this game three. The only other player that had double digits in this, uh, this game three right here was Tyler Hero for the Miami Heat, man. He had 14 points, four rebounds, and one assist. No one else even finish the game in, in double figures, man, for the uh, Miami Heat. And that's just unacceptable, especially when you're a number one seed. Like, I can understand if, like, you're an eight seed and you put up, like, 79 points. But, bro, when you're a one seed and you put up 79 points on a playoff game, that's just almost unacceptable, man. If I was if I was Spo, man, I'd be back there yelling like a motherfucker at them players, man. I ain't even going to lie. But, um, yeah, man. But as for the 76ers, uh I will say Joel Embiid really didn't have that dominant of a performance, which is kind of crazy. Like I said, Bam Adebayo wasn't really on shit that whole game, and Joel Embiid didn't really have a monster game on the, the offensive side of the court. Uh, he finished the game with 18 points. He had 11 rebounds, which is pretty nice. You know what I'm saying? He's a double-double machine. He's going to get that. Um, James Harden, uh, This was a. I feel like this was a pretty impressive win, especially having James Harden only have 17 points. He also had uh, six assists, uh, nine rebounds, and... Yeah, man, no one else really had that um, outstanding of a performance besides maybe Danny Green with 21 points. And I feel like in every playoff series uh, that Danny Green is involved in, I feel like he's going to give you at least one to two games where he's going to give you at least uh, 21 points with like four to five threes, you feel me? That's just the type of player Danny Green is. Um, obviously, his shooting numbers aren't as great, um, you know, the past couple of years is when he was with uh, the Spurs, but he can still shoot that damn ball, you know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, man, don't sleep on Danny Green. But uh, So let's move on to the game four between the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, now this game, man, like I said before, Jimmy Butler has been getting off all playoffs. This man finished with 40 points, six rebounds, and four assists, man. You can't really ask much more of um, Jimmy Buckets. You know what I'm saying? He's really been doing his thing all playoffs. Um, Bam Adebayo definitely had um, a little bit you know, more of an impressive performance, but it's still not the... Uh, the performance you want from someone like Bam Adebayo, but then again, it is hard to ask uh, someone like Bam Adebayo to go out there and have an all-star caliber performance with decent efficiency when he's going up against uh, someone like Joel Embiid, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, he was their second leading scorer when it comes to the Miami Heat, um, and the third leading scorer was uh, Victor Oladipo with 15 points. Now, like I said, Victor Oladipo, he's kind of like a wild card, you know what I'm saying? You really don't know what you're gonna get on uh, from him from a night-to-night -night basis. Uh, but he can come in, like I said, give you 15, give you 20, sometimes 25 points um, on a nightly basis. You know what I'm saying? And that's really what you want um, when it comes to a player like Victor Oladipo. And, hey, man, this this uh, Miami team, it's still very deep. Uh, but the Philadelphia 76ers, man, they just came out looking like the more complete team. And, hey, man, the biggest X factor in this game is gotta be James Harden man he was looking like the Houston Rockets James Harden and this is exactly what we wanted to see um you know what I'm saying 
I mean, shit. This is exactly who James Harden should have been. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's really not much more we could have said. This is this is the player that Philadelphia really thought that they were going to get um, when they got him at the trade deadline for Ben Simmons. You know what I'm saying? He had an outstanding performance with 31 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds. That is the prime James Harden. Um, you know what I'm saying? And as a James Harden fan, I really love seeing this um, this piece of work from James Harden, man. It's really, it's really awesome. Uh, but as for Joel Embiid, man, he had a pretty impressive game too. Nothing outrageous, but he finished the game with 24 points. He had 11 rebounds, two assists. Um, pretty easy stuff for um, a player like Joel Embiid. Um, but their, th their third leading scorer was Tyrese Maxey with 18 points. He also had four assists, three rebounds. Um, Tyrese Maxey, there's not much more you can really say about him. One of the best young players in the league. One of the most efficient young players in the league doing his thing. But, um... But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to this game four between the Miami Heat and the Philadelphia 76ers. Tobias Harris, um, he finished the game with 13 points, four assists, three rebounds. It's a pretty basic game from someone like Tobias Harris, if you ask me. Um, Danny Green, he finished the game with 11 points, two rebounds. Pretty basic performance, you know what I'm saying, from everyone else on the team. Uh, Joel Embiid and James Harden were obviously the anchors to this victory, in which they need to be every night, you know what I'm saying? Especially James Harden, man. You got to step up a little bit more. And last night was, I feel like, a really good sign for Philadelphia 76ers fans. And, uh, yeah, man, now that these series are uh, tied up 2-2, man, after the Philadelphia 76ers and the Dallas Mavericks both went down 0-2 to start off both of their series, um, I feel like, honestly, man, this just goes to show you really never know what's going to happen in the playoffs, man. Um, obviously, everyone knows the playoffs. It's really a chess match, especially between the two head coaches. I feel like we got to give a lot of love to all the head coaches that are in the playoffs right now. I know I talk a lot of shit on Doc Rivers, but I will say he um, he made um, you know some decent adjustments since Joel Embiid has came back. But um, you know what I'm saying. Uh, but you know Spo, he's been doing his thing for the Miami Heat all playoffs. And uh, Jason Kidd, I feel like he didn't really get enough love at the beginning of the season when he got signed to the Dallas Mavericks, being their head coach. I feel like he's a pretty underrated head coach, if you ask me, man. Shout out Jason Kidd for sure. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And also, man, Monty Williams. There ain't much more we can say about Monty Williams. One of the best coaches in the league, if not the best coach. Um, yeah, man, I feel like, like I said, man, it's really just a chess match uh, when it comes to the playoffs and the regular season. You can run through all these regular season games all you want. But when it comes to, you know, playing the same team seven times in a series, that's when you're going to have to figure out their game plan and just come out next time and uh, try to figure out what you can do different, what you can do better, you know what I'm saying, what you can do more of. And, uh, yeah, I feel like that's kind of what has brought the Philadelphia 76ers and also the Dallas Mavericks um, back, you know, from the dead. Because they were pretty much, everyone thought they were going to get swept after those two, those first two um, games, you know what I'm saying? So, shout out the Philadelphia 76ers, shout out the Dallas Mavericks, man, for making basketball last a little bit longer, you feel me? I really appreciate it, man. Hey, because as basketball fans, we don't want that shit to go into the offseason already. We don't want the basketball season to end already. So, hey, the longer basketball stays on, hey, the happier we'll be, you feel me? So... Hey, man, I hope you enjoyed this video, man. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video, man. It really helps us out. You know what I'm saying? On the Bucket Discussions podcast, the channel, man, whatever you want to call it, man. Hey, but make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. We are trying to get the podcast out there. We're trying to get global. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to get as many basketball supporters, as many basketball fans as we can um, on our stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just so we can get multiple different opinions, multiple different takes. You know what I'm saying? Um, just how, just, you know what I'm saying? Just build our own little basketball community. That's really kind of the main goal and um, what we're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Hey, until next time, man. Peace out. In the jungle like I'm Conan, kind of a buff hands. Switch the flow like it was broken. I'm on the road, man. Making plays just like DeRozan. I shoot my shot, and that shit wetter than the ocean. I brag a lot, but with the wind and come the boats in. I made a lot from them apartments that I sold in. Make it up to college, sold them streets when he enrolled in. I know I'm a scholar from the moments that I was exposed in.